second graders, we hope you're doing well and staying healthy and safe. We miss seeing you every week, but please know that you're always in our prayers and thoughts, and we've been praying for you and your family. We hope you're having a great faith journey this year. Let's start off our opening prayer that's on our colorful prayer card that you have in your reconciliation folders. And quiet your hearts, and we'll just pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Gabriel the Archangel, you are God's special messenger. Help us to be God's special messengers too. May all that we think, say, and do be a way of sharing God's love for others. St. Gabriel the Archangel, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So we're getting ready to enter in to a very special season of the church, and it's called Advent, and it's a season of waiting. It begins on Sunday, November 29th, so it's coming up, and it's that special time where we get ready for Jesus' birth. I'm sure most of you have celebrated a birthday, your own birthday, or a friend's birthday, family birthdays, and you have nice celebrations, and you have to get ready for them. So you have to decorate the house, you have to get special um, presents, maybe special food. You have to do special things for that person. Well, that's kind of what we're doing now for Advent. We're getting ready for that special person that came into our world that saved us. We're getting ready for Jesus' birth. So to get ready for that special day, we have Advent, and it's for, on four, for four Sundays, four weeks, and it kind of reminds me of what Mary and Joseph did when um, they were getting ready for Jesus' birth. They had to do the same thing. They had to get their house ready. They had to have a place for Jesus to live. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing. We're getting our hearts ready for Jesus to come to us. One way we can do that is make an Advent wreath. And you have all the supplies to do that. We're going to show you how to put it together so you can have it in your homes um, with your family. If you're able to attend Mass during this time, you'll see St. Gabriel will have one. St. Gabriel Church will have one. Our parish has a, a beautiful Advent wreath that they light a candle each week, each Sunday. In your reconciliation folder, you should have a sheet explaining the beautiful symbolism of the Advent wreath. If you want to pull that out, you can kind of follow along with Mrs. Varga as she explains. And also, if you need to get your supplies for your wreath, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that now and get your supplies for your wreath. And we will get started putting our beautiful wreath together. Mrs. Varga? Okay, boys and girls, you have your wreath. The Advent wreath is made in the shape of a circle. And as you can see this one, the circle, you can see, see much better there. And the circle reminds us of God's everlasting love for us. It never ends. The green, evergreen branches reminds us that God's love for us never fades away or dies. You have pine cones, and the pine cones protect seed and symbolize life and resurrection. You can put your pine cones anywhere you want on the wreath. You have berries, and the berries symbolize nourishment and fruitfulness of living a Christian life. And with your berries, you can do the same thing. You can just place them anywhere on the wreath. And you notice we have four candles. We light the one candle each week to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world, and he takes away sin and darkness. The color purple, or violet, is a liturgical color to remind us of a time of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. We prepare and wait for the coming of Jesus. The first purple candle symbolizes hope. It's called the prophet's candle, and it reminds us that Jesus is coming. The second purple candle symbolizes faith and love. It's called the Bethlehem candle because it reminds us of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. The color pink or rose is a liturgical color that reminds us of a time of rejoicing. We are excited and filled with joy. So the third candle symbolizes joy. 
and it's called the shepherd's candle. And it reminds us of the joy the world experienced at the coming birth of Christ. We rejoice Christmas is near. The fourth purple candle symbolizes peace. It's called the angel's candle, and it reminds us of peace on earth and goodwill to men. Now, some families put a white candle in the middle on Christmas Eve, and that's the liturgical color that means to celebrate. So the white candle symbolizes Jesus Christ, and we are celebrating his birth. It's Christmas Day. Now, I'm going to say a blessing, uh, a prayer that's a blessing over your Advent wreath. You can, you can just listen to me uh, say it, and this way your family will have your uh, wreath blessed. Dear Jesus, thank you for the wonderful gift you gave us of coming to the world to save us from our sins. As we are waiting and preparing for your arrival, we light these Advent candles as a sign of your light in a dark world. We ask you to be the light of our life and to shine in our hearts. Bless our Advent wreaths, our families, our friends, and each of us as we prepare our hearts with hope, love, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So on your prayer table, you're going to change the color because our church is now going, our liturgical um, colors this season is purple. So we're going to have purple on our prayer table. And if you start to go to church during Advent, you're going to notice that the priest wears purple also. So the color purple stands for penance. And boy, we should know that word by now. We've gone through all our chapters now in our reconciliation book, and I do believe we've learned that penance is when we... Um, it's something we freely choose to do to show that we're sorry for our sins. So if we're truly sorry for our sins, we're going to do something to make it better. So Advent is also a special time to do great things like make the Advent wreath, um, get ready and buy presents for people, sure. But it's also about preparing our hearts and showing Jesus how much we love him by doing kind things for people, maybe making extra sacrifices, giving some things up, um, helping others. Um, a lot of times we do that during Christmas. We donate things maybe a little bit more during the Advent season. So that's another way we can get our hearts ready during this time. Um, the other thing is that we're prayerful. So make sure you still have your prayer table, that you've been putting your special things on it. Um, if you have a cross, maybe you keep your Bible on your prayer table that you've been using your faith journal, I hope we're still working on. Keep all that on your prayer table. And this is another good thing to do during Advent, to really be prayerful and extra, extra prayerful, say extra prayers. And um, that's how we can get ready for Jesus. All right, boys and girls, I do have one final a closing prayer for us. As Advent is approaching, in Advent, Lord Jesus, we wait and pray. We know your birthday's near. Help us to get ready by making room for you in our hearts. Help us to also remember that you will come again at the end of time, just as you promised. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, boys and girls, have a wonderful Advent season. 